everybody, I hope you are well. Some of you may have listened to my other story that I've read out by Julia Donaldson, The Gruffalo. Very special story last year as it was its 20th anniversary. But I thought it might be nice to follow on from that with The Gruffalo's Child. I'm sure some of you have read this, another brilliant book by the very brilliant author Julia Donaldson. So if you're sitting comfortably, I shall read it to you. The Gruffalo's Child. One snowy night, when the Gruffalo snored, the Gruffalo's child was feeling bored. The Gruffalo's child was feeling brave, so she tiptoed out of the Gruffalo cave. The snow fell fast and the wind blew wild. Into the wood went the Gruffalo's child. Ah, ooh, a trail in the snow. Whose is this trail and where does it go? A tail poked out of the log pile house. Could this be the tale of the big bad mouse? Out slid the creature, his eyes were small and he didn't have whiskers, no, no, none at all. You're not the mouse. Not I, said the snake. He's down by the lake eating gruffalo cake. The snow fell fast and the wind blew wild. I'm, I'm not scared, said the gruffalo's child. Ah, ooh, marks in the snow. Whose are these claw marks and where do they go? Two eyes gleamed out of the treetop house. Could these be the aisle eyes of the big bad mouse? Down flew the creature. His tail was short and he didn't have whiskers of any sort. Hmm, you're not the mouse. Twit twoo, not I, but he's somewhere nearby eating gruffalo pie. The snow fell fast and the wind blew wild. I'm not scared, said the gruffalo's child. Ah, hmm, tracks in the snow. Who is, whose is this track and where does it go? <gasps> Whiskers at last and an underground house. Could this be the home of the big bad mouse? Out slunk the creature. His eyes weren't fiery. His tail wasn't scaly. And his whiskers, well, they weren't wiry. Hmm, you're not the mouse. Oh no, not me. He's under a tree, drinking gruffalo tea. It's all a trick, said the gruffalo's child, as she sat on the stump where the snow lay piled. I don't believe in the big bad mouse. But here comes a little one out of his house. Not big, not bad, but a mouse at least. Hmm, you'll taste good as a midnight feast. Wait, said the mouse, before you eat, there's a friend of mine you ought to meet. If you'll let me hop onto a hazel twig, I'll beckon my friend, so bad and so big. Hmm, the Gruffalo's child unclenched her fist. The big bad mouse, so he, he does exist. The mouse hopped on to the hay, hopped into the hazel tree. He beckoned, then said, mm, just wait and see. Out came the moon. It was bright and round and a terrible shadow fell on the ground. Who is this creature? So big, bad and strong. His tail and his whiskers are terribly long. His ears are enormous and over his shoulder, he carries a nut as big as a boulder. Mm. The big bad mouse, yelled the Gruffalo's child. And the mouse jumped down from the twig and smiled. Ah, ooh, prints in the snow. Whose are these footprints? And where do they go? The footprints led to the Gruffalo cave where the Gruffalo's child was a little, was a bit less brave and the Gruffalo's child was a bit less bored and the Gruffalo snored and snored and snored. Yeah. Hope you enjoyed that. He's a very clever little mouse. He's clever in the first one and he's clever in this one. I hope you enjoyed listening to the story and I'll see you soon for another one. 
Bye.